Hey, Paul, how you doing? Can you hear me? I'm good. Can you hear me? I can. How you doing All today? All right. I'm good. Good. How's it going? Great. Hey, you know, it's uh, always a little stressful when we try to hook up multiple cameras and microphones and we get a little bit of technical difficulties, but we got a good team here and we're working through it. So I appreciate your patience and everybody no attending. So, hey, you know, Paul, I, I'm so glad you're here. We, uh, we just love our relationship with Vascax and this is just such a great bright spot in the industry right now. And everybody starts out with direct to garment printing with heat pressing. And there's just been a, a, a lot of interest and, and a lot of people gravitating to conveyor dryers. Uh, why do you think that is? Maybe you could tell us a little bit about Vastex first and then, and then maybe dive into why the big interest of direct to garment printing and conveyor drying. Sure, I mean, it's been, it's been about what two or three years since we've had the the direct to garment dryers. So this is something that's a little bit new for us. We've been around for 60 years. So this is this is something a little bit new for us. But we've made great dryers. We had people coming. Can we use direct to garment in your dryers? Can we can we do it? And the answer is always no because the problem with your traditional conveyor dryer is you're just going to heat up your shirt, start at room temperature, and slowly increase until you reach 320, the problem is the shirt's coming out of the dryer at that time. So you don't get a dwell time. You need a minute, minute and a half at that 320 degrees to get your proper cure. So um, if you got that for long enough, we'd be over curing our shirts. So we kind of went back to the drawing board, looked at our dryers, what we can do. Um, and we put what we call our, our boost zone. So what you have to do is get your ink up to temperature really fast. And those first few inches of the dryer, that boost zone gets the ink up to temperature and now we can hold it. So three or four inches, 320 degrees, the rest of it, you're able to hold that 320 degrees. Without that capability, you wouldn't be able to properly cure direct to garment. Plus we have adjustable heater heights and adjustable belt speed, um, powered exhaust to get the moisture out. So there's so many features in these dryers that are specific for direct to garment. I mean, about three years, but now we're really just starting to I mean, so many people, I mean, especially some of your customers, I mean, it's, it's going crazy right now. Yeah. So you're saying it's a specific new conveyor dryer for direct to garment printer. That that's, that's the bottom line. If, if I'm a screen printer and I've been screen printing forever and I've got conveyor dryers for screen printing, I, I can't just use those same conveyor dryers is what you're saying for direct to garment because it's a, it's a different curing process. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, it's, it's, it's that dual zone, those two zones you need. And I don't want to say we just, we've just been doing that for three years. We've, we had our, our big red dryer, which we've had for, I mean, uh, over a decade now. That had a t the, tw the two zones, but it wasn't as popular for the direct garment It was good for um, some of the bigger DTGs, but water-based ink, discharge, screen printing, just plastic all ink. Um, but when we started making our little red dryers, that's really when it took off because they were competitively priced with your high-end heat presses. Um, so more and more people started to say, let me try this out. Once word got out, I mean, it, it really, I mean, it, it went crazy. You know, one of the, the questions that comes up a lot is what size dryer should I get? Now you guys make the X13D and the two and the three and the, you have a 30 inch model and a 54 inch model. How do I determine what's the best uh, conveyor dryer to go with what I'm doing? The biggest, the, the biggest thing when you're figuring out the conveyor dryer is your production speed. So if, if you have a single, single Epson, a, a 2100, um, our literate X1D will work. It'll be a little bit slow if you're, if you're really pumping out the shirts. Uh, we usually like the X2D. Uh, 30 inch wide, that'll do, um, excuse me while I'm looking at my book, we, because we have a lot of direct-to-garment dryers now and really something and, for everybody. And, and what I come up against too is I, I ask somebody, okay, what are you doing now and where do you see yourself in six months or in a year? So yep. if the X2D is great for an F2100 today, do you see yourself growing into an F3070 in six months or a year? Because if that's the case, you're going to want to be at the larger, the faster, the wider model, right? Yep. Yep. Now the X2D, that, it'll do about 50 shirts an hour. So it's a great production, but the last thing you want is to 
yeah, a year down the line, get that newer printer or get more printers. And now you have this dryer that can't keep up. All of these dryers are modular. They're upgradable. So you can add chambers onto it. You can add conveyor lengths onto it. So you really can't outgrow the dryer. What we're seeing is someone gets an X2D for a 2100. They get a couple more 2100s. They can add another chamber on it. So now they're increasing the capacity of their pre-existing dryer, which it makes it easier than getting a whole new dryer. The thing has a 15-year heater warranty, three-year bumper-to-bumper warranty. You don't want to get rid of it and buy a whole new dryer after a year. So why not upgrade it? You know, I, I think that's our, our mic drop moment there about expansion and not having to uh, buy a whole nother heater or conveyor dryer when you're expanding. Because, you know, something I come up with um, a lot with my clients is that they are limited in space. Not everybody yep. has the space to keep adding um, extra dryers and extra equipment. If you're looking at adding a second or third printer, adding a dryer can just really eat up space fast. So being able to extend that, speed it up, that's huge. That's, that's our mic drop yeah. moment. Yeah, and I mean, they're not big dryers to begin with. That X2D that does 50 shirts an hour, it's I think about seven feet long altogether. So it's not these big gas dryers that are 20, 25 feet long, and this will do that production um, because of the heater height adjustment, the, the airflow. And I mean, that dryer can do 50 shirts an hour with, digital white ink. So it's, it's a great machine for that. Perfect. You know, and some of the other advantages I, I hear why people want to move to conveyor dryers is when you heat press a, a print, you get that box around it, that heat press box. And sometimes yep. these, these shirts, they're, most of the time, they're going straight from you finishing that product and, and you're giving them to the client, right? Yep. They don't yep. want to see that. You don't see that with your dryers. No, the, the big thing is everybody wants retail ready because, you, yeah, you want to take it off the dryer, package it up, put it on a shelf somewhere. So that that platen mark you usually get is from heat pressing, usually the pre-treat, and then you heat press again when you do your final cure. So without that pressure on it for extended periods of time, you don't get that, that box, that marking. Um, it usually comes out in the wash, but it doesn't look good when you show it to your customer the first time and say, here's a $30 shirt. Oh, the box, it'll wash out. No problem. Um, it also doesn't mat down the ink. It doesn't give it that vinyl kind of glossy heat press look. Um, it doesn't mute the colors as well, because again, when you put pressure on it, you're, you can tend to mute the colors. And I know you guys, we love the prints that you do at the shows and run through them because they're these bright, vibrant colors. And they have a very screen printed look and feel to them, which is great. So we got easier production because we're just taking that shirt off the yep. printer, putting it on a conveyor dryer and off to printing the next shirt. You got a yep. better looking print, a better product for your client. It's a total win. You know, Paul, I, I really predict that uh, we're going to have a ton of interest uh, from this. And so I hope you guys are, are cranking up production. What's the lead time right now in getting a, a conveyor dryer? Um, I think we're about five to six weeks on those right now. Um, we lost a couple of days. We were snowed in for a couple of days this week. Um, but yeah, we're, we're producing them as fast as we can. And they're all, I mean, made to order at this point. So we're about five to six weeks out. So think ahead. Um, but I, it's going to be a quality dryer. And I, we get so many great, great comments on them. People love them. Yeah. And this isn't a sales process, but get your order in now so that you oh, can yeah. put that dryer yep. down the road. Uh, somebody yep. asked a question, can um, you run your pre-treated pre -treated shirts through the dryer? We talked about this earlier uh, when Roy was doing his demo. You can, uh, you're gonna yep. run them through, dry them. You're just gonna tap them with your heat press before you print on to, to flatten the fibers. So yep. Paul, I really appreciate your time. Um, you guys are awesome. We love you. Thank you so much. And look forward Glad to, to seeing you at the, uh, at the after uh, show sure. party. Can I can I mention one thing real quick before I go? Absolutely. Just go for it. For every, everybody out there doing DTG through their conveyor dryer, get a donut probe. When you're setting it up, that's the biggest question we get is setting it up. Donut probe, Atkins, there's other ones you can go and get on Amazon for under a hundred bucks, but do that. It's going to make setup so much easier and get this thing dialed in. So your shirts are perfect every time. So a donut probe, you're just um, setting that, you're, you're setting that and then running it through the dryer. And what's yep. it doing? 
So you're setting this into the ink, mm -hmm. press it into the ink. Other end is connected to a long cord. It's plugged into your thermometer. This will give you the reading. So you can see the temperature every second in the dryer. So you can see that temperature increase really fast and then hold. That makes it a lot easier to dial it in properly. We have, when you get a dryer, you, you'll get a profile sheet. You can see that there. Yep. So you're seeing that's, that's your time in the tunnel. That's your temperature. So increase and then hold. That's what we're seeing and that's what we're really going for. Right on. And, and our tax, and I'm sure you guys, uh, we can help. Anybody who purchases this from us will we'll help you out with that. Um, yeah, somebody had popped up a question about pricing. We can talk more about that offline if you give us a call, but the range from a, uh, an X1D to an X3D 54 inch, we're, we're talking a few thousand dollars to about $10,000, right? Yep. Yep. And I mean, and can go from there, depending, I think our um, X1D to 18 inch is about $3,300 and then, yeah, it'll, it'll go up from there, but yeah, you guys have all the pricing for that. Yep. And we can talk more about that later. All right. Well, thank you again, Paul. Really appreciate your time. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much.